Okay, good. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about how we can advance the future of CI CD together um, and under the umbrella of the CD Foundation. So, just first up, um, I'm Director of Open Source at CloudBees. I'm also on the governing board of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Um, I'm the co instigator of the Great Brexit pub crawl. Was anyone here at that on Friday? Hey. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at, as Tracy Miranda. So um, I'm here to talk about uh, continuous delivery, which uh, we saw in a poll earlier. That's what many people see as the CD of CICD. And it's essentially a, an engineering practice where teams you know, commit regular amounts of code, um, but they always want to keep it in uh, a state where it's ready to ship. And so continuous delivery is something that as a concept has you know, been around for 10 years or so. And we have a lot of research uh, in this day and age about the best way to deliver software. So who's read the Accelerate book or come across that? Yeah, a few hands. But I, I highly recommend um, that book as you know, the modern text for how you and your team should be delivering soft software in this day and age. And that's accompanied by um, the state of DevOps reports, which come out sort of every year. And they give information about ways you can measure your software throughput, but also really good suggestions about how you would improve that in your team. And yeah, one clue, it's more about the team environment than the individuals and, and their special powers. So and I love that quote from Nicole Forsgren, uh, one of the authors of the book, who just talks about how the people, the teams that are good at it just keep getting better and better. Um, and we have teams that can kind of really struggle if they don't sort of get the right things together. So continuous delivery has been around for a while. We have a book which maps it all out. But at the same time, we find that adoption is really, really low for this practice. And we go, well, why is that? And there's three big challenges um, that I think people are facing at the moment. And the first is this huge shift in the industry, which is the rise of microservices. So who's doing things with microservices these, today? Yeah, I'd say about half the room. So that presents some interesting challenges. You know, you no longer have your monolith application. What does it mean? When are you re releasing different bits of the, of the, of the services that make up you know, what, if, what even is your application? How, how do you define it? And then you've got cloud native technologies, things like Kubernetes. Who's using Kubernetes at the moment? Yeah, quite a few more. That introduces a whole kind of distributed paradigm, which, um, you, you know, has different challenges to contend with. On top of that, you look at the tool landscape today, and it's pretty fragmented. You have all sorts of different CI and CD tools. They don't necessarily work together, and it's often left to um, you as the DevOps folks to work out how to integrate, I don't know, security scan with your bills, with your uh, delivery mechanism. And then finally, of course, change is hard. So we're all human. We all have teams. We all like how we do certain things. And just having to evolve that um, as a group can be pretty challenging. So. That was some of the motivation for why the Continuous Delivery Foundation was formed. Uh, it's less than a year old, so this is the first FOSDEM it's really been alive at. And it's, as an open source foundation, it started as well around four founding projects. And um, I'll talk more about those in a minute. But it was pretty significant um, just because we were kind of trying to bring together the whole space so we call it Continuous Delivery Foundation, but it does cover you know, CI, continuous deployment, continuous delivery, and DevOps. And we're looking at different ways we can tackle problems in this space. So essentially, we see ourselves as a neutral home for the next generation of continuous delivery uh, collaboration. And that's the key bit of it, of like how we're going to come together to solve industry-wide problems. So one of the ways we've been thinking about what can we do as this foundation after we launched was to get uh, a lot of the, the board members together 
and you might recognize some of the project leads. Kosuke Kawaguchi is in there of Jenkins and uh, Andy Glover of Spinnaker. And then we've also had uh, Jez Humble, who wrote the book on continuous delivery. And he sat down with us you know, to share his experience as well as think about you know, how can we go about solving these problems. And the thing I love about this picture is that everybody's wearing shades because the future of CICD is so bright. <laughs> so the outcome of that meeting um, was actually to come up with nine goals for the foundation. And so there's a lot there, but uh, what I'm going to do is pick out about three or four of those and tell you um, where we've gotten to in, in our journey and how you can get involved if it's something interesting to you. Um, for the full details of all the different goals and how we are trying to achieve them, uh, you can check out the, the website at cd.foundation. So the first one is you know, driving continuous delivery adoption, helping people in their journeys. Um, when we come to the landscape, uh, the first thing, like uh, the CNCF, which is the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, they have this massive uh, landscape which shows all the different tools and how they get qualified. We also decided a very first step is to start to try to categorize CICD tools, which turns out is really, really hard um, because things fit in multiple categories. Um, but we do have a first version of the landscape, which is open source, and people can make contributions. We're hoping to get all the different tools in there and to mark them in the different categories, so the main thing of, of what they do. So I'd invite folks to check that out. It definitely has mistakes, so you're welcome to submit uh, pull requests, but it's a version 0 0.1, and we're hoping to build this up to give, you know, just get people new into the space, start to have an idea of what the different categories are, what they mean, and who are the, you know, what are the options in the space. Um, we also, just in terms of spreading the word about continuous delivery, we have a set of meetups. So these were actually Jenkins area meetups. So Jenkins is one of the founding projects. And these meetups were contributed to the CD Foundation. And the CD Foundation is now kind of driving those forward. Uh, meetup owners are invited to widen the scope. So if you want to talk about more than Jenkins, you can do that. And we've got quite a few all around the world. And maybe some of you have already been there. Maybe some of you run them. Uh, but either way, I encourage you to either join a, a local meetup or look to start one um, yourself so you can sort of work together with other people to sort of see how people are approaching things. Okay, then one of the other missions is to just focus on um, the projects that are part of the foundation. So there's a lot of CICD projects out in the world. Uh, we launched with four specific projects, so Jenkins, Spinnaker, Tekton, and Jenkins X. So these are founding projects. And the interesting thing I find um, about the different projects we have in the space is that they really represent different parts of um, adoption in the industry. So you take something like Jenkins, like, OK, who's heard of Jenkins? Yeah, I think some of you are just being lazy. <laughs> so most people, um, I'd say Jenkins is pretty much late majority. If you're doing some form of CICD, you've come across it, you've used it. Um, and it's only laggards who perhaps aren't employing CICD who aren't using it. Spinnaker, probably early majority, lots of people using Spinnaker. Well, how many people in this room are using Spinnaker have heard of Spinnaker? OK, maybe? <laughs> Uh, yeah, just, just a few people. Um, and then over here on the right, uh, Jenkins X and Tekton. For those of you who were in the talk earlier, we talked about Tekton, and there'll be some talks later about Jenkins X. Those are coming in much more on the kind of innovators and early adopters, folks who are just getting to grips with microservices and Kubernetes and looking for tools that can deal with the different kind of tech paradigm. So, you know, tools in different languages, tools with different challenges. So as a foundation, we're sort of saying, okay, what does each tool need and how can we help them grow and be useful to, to the end users who want to use them? And you know, some of the things we do is just measuring you know, how many contributions we have. That was a little infographic I did, just trying to compare how many people are contributing to the different projects. 
compared to, let's say, something like Kubernetes, which is really taken off. And just seeing, like, you know, Jenkins for a basically a 15-year-old project is, is doing pretty well and quite healthy, and all the other projects are sort of growing steadily. So that's something we'll look at sort of year on year. Uh, but a key thing is we do want to just foster some tool interoperability. So how do we make sure all these tools stay working together? So we want to think about you know, standardizing building blocks into shared APIs, building this whole ecosystem where things can be plug and play. So it's not like you have to go and figure out how they all work together for yourself. And then just generally, we see that will improve the state of delivery for the entire industry if people are not less struggling to themselves and working out what's gone wrong when they plug tools together. So we have some ideas for common APIs and establishing, let's say, common metadata. You know, how do you define a release? Um, it should be standardized, whether it's from Spinnaker or whether it's from Jenkins X. So we're looking at ways we can do that. Um, so very recently, we spun up a working group called the SIG Interoperability Group. And where's Fatty? Oh, there we are. So Fatty is one of our, our chairs who's doing an incredible job um, just getting people together. And I want to highlight um, this pull request, which is in progress. And it's one of the first things, which is actually saying, look, there's all sorts of different tools out there. And even just with the vocabulary, um, you know, what do they refer to as a pipeline? What does it mean for that tool? So can we, first of all, define them and then maybe start to translate so that if you're talking about a pipeline in one tool, is that equivalent? Is the step the same thing? So before we can integrate, we need to just sort of say, what, what is it? What are the different tools talking about? So again, this is all in GitHub. I encourage you, if you have a project, to go and add it to the list and to, to just contribute to that sort of uh, first step in getting to the shared vocabulary. OK, and the final bit in this kind of whirlwind tour is the goal of expanding into emerging tech areas. Um, so machine learning um, is something that's emerging quite uh, in quite a few areas. And we have a specific area, so machine learning ops is the intersection of DevOps and machine learning. So we've also got a special interest group that started up around that. Um, I believe we've got Cara Delamarque is one of uh, the very active members in there. And so one of the things I'd like to highlight from that group is that group is working on um, a very initial roadmap. So what does it mean to um, for DevOps and machine learning. So they talk about in the roadmap, if I pick out two highlights, you know, what is MLOps? One, it's the extension of the DevOps methodology to include machine learning. So making sure models and data and code are all first class citizens. And then things like, what is it not? You know, it's not about putting Jupyter notebooks into production environments, but you know, helping people find better ways to do things. So I highly encourage you to go check that out. And again, if that's of interest, uh, the group is open, join the meetings, talk to Kara, and yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. Okay, uh, I think that's all I have time for today. So I haven't even touched on some of the other things we're doing around uh, diversity and security, both very important areas. But um, I hope you get the general idea that it's just you know, people coming together trying to drive um, things in the right direction for the good of the full industry and not just one specific tool or one specific vendor. And yeah, please check out our website and uh, <coughs> come, find, come try and join us. And uh, we also have a Twitter account where you can find out what's happening with the foundation. So, thank you very much. <laughs>
Um, so my response is yes, we're looking to work with uh, a lot of different open source communities out there. CNCF is one, and actually in our interoperability SIG, which has just recently started, we did have a member of the SIG app delivery join. Um, so we hope that we continue talking and yeah, just find ways to work together without necessarily all working on the same things in different ways.